Romanticizing your life does not look like adding more things into your life. Romanticizing your life is totally the way that you approach it. Whether you are feeling stuck in a rut or just really want to add some extra magic, some extra sprinkle into your day-to-day -day life, this video is going to be for you. I am about to dive deep into all of the different ways that I have started to romanticize my life and I've broken them down so that they're really easy for you to follow. You can be happier, you can be more grounded. That is what I I want you to be able to reach today. Welcome back to Organized Chaos. My name is Regan and I'm so very happy that you are here. The title itself of how to romanticize your life may be a little bit confusing. We hear so often, especially on social media, there's a huge new trend on, it's not really new, but on how do you romanticize your life? And everyone seems to be trying to romanticize their life. Oftentimes this romanticization, if that's even a word, typically equals consumerism. When people talk about romanticizing your life, they talk about it in the way of go and buy this thing, serve your drinks in this glassware, sleep on these sheets. And while yes, in the rest of this video, I'm actually going to touch on sleep quality. I will touch on eating things out of nice glassware. A lot of why I'm recommending it to you is not because I think you need to up level your life solely based on what you have, but it's actually entirely based around your mindset. I wanted to sit down and chat with all of you about in my 29 years, I'm almost 30, how I look at romanticizing my life because I've been on this big healing journey. If you've been with me for a while, you'll know about this. I have lived my entire life as an incredibly anxious person. And to this day, I still have a ton of anxious tendencies that I'm really, really trying to work through. But shifting my mindset has actually allowed me to be so much more grateful and so much more grounded in not everything that I do because I think it's an unrealistic expectation to feel grounded in everything that you do. It makes it seem like emotions don't exist, but certainly in a ton of what I do. What I wanted to do today is talk through how can you romanticize your life in a way that feels attainable, in a way that focuses on how do we shift your mindset so that you can stay grounded, so that you can focus on feeling grateful, so that you can wake up feeling really refreshed in the morning, and so that you can actually go and put your energy and effort towards things that bring you a ton of joy. So often in our life, we're pulled in a thousand different directions, but what we end up doing is focusing our time and our energy in directions that aren't really productive for us. If you want to hear more about productivity and how I've really redefined my relationship with productivity and my to-do list, make sure you jump into the video that I released last week on entering your productive girl era because I think that one will be hugely valuable to you and pairs really nicely with this video. But this idea of productivity, this idea that we're in this rat race just takes away from us actually enjoying the life that we have. You're literally given one life. Why wouldn't you live each day to the fullest? And living each day to the fullest does not mean that you need to go and run a marathon every single day. My mom came and visited me a couple of years ago when I was still living in London, and this was around the holidays. And she asked for something super simple like hummus and crisps or something like that. I, instead of grabbing the bag and the jar of hummus out of the fridge, I went and picked out a couple of cute little bowls, served us some water with ice and lemon, and made a whole little routine of it. Romanticizing my life is taking those small moments and respecting myself. Now, respect for you you self-respect may be defined in a different way. It might be purchasing clothes that allow you to work out and support you throughout those workouts. Maybe they're more expensive than what other people would purchase. The caveat that I will give in all of this is as I typically do, this is just from my experience. This does not mean you need to go and purchase the things that I am about to outline because again, romanticizing your life does not equal consumerism. What I want to do is spur this thought in your head of what small changes can I make on a day-to-day -day basis to reduce my stress, to bring me back down to some sort of equilibrium so that I can make the really important decisions that I need to be making every single day so that I make sure I show up and I'm ready to tackle the day at 90%, 100%, whatever percentage level you're at today. The first step in all of this is going to be to get organized. If you are the type of person that hates organization, I, I, I kind of get you, I guess, but not really because I have never had that issue you. If you know me, I freaking love to organize, but I have one very specific phrase that 
I say to all of my friends when they come over, they're like, what is happening? Your house is so organized. How is it organized? And it's because everything has a home. I'm not going to Marie Kondo you and tell you you need to lift everything up and see if it sparks joy. What I am going to say is a clear space allows you to make clearer decisions. If your space is cluttered, if your desk is cluttered, you are going to have a really hard time because there's so much stimuli happening in your brain. You need to clear that space up so that you can have those clearer thoughts. And when I say that everything has a home, I mean, everything has a place to go. Anytime I take a thing out of that place, I directly, once I'm finished with it, put it right back in the place where it came from. I love hidden storage. Like throughout my house, you'll see, I have a ton of little hidden storage pockets under the bed, behind the couch, every inch of storage space that is available in this home is used. Another great thing to do while you're getting organized is start going through and saying, do I really need this? Now again, you can ask the question, does this spark joy? Sure, go for it, live your best life. But really it's, do I really need this? Is this something that I've just carried with me? Is this a part of a previous life of mine that I no longer need in my home? That's really just adding clutter to my home. I've moved so many different times in my life. So luckily, I guess I've been able to do this over and over again and whittle all of my possessions down to the things that really, really matter to me. Like I have books that really matter to me. I have photos that really matter to me. I have decoration pieces that really matter to me, but it's a conscious and intentional decision, whatever I keep in my home. Oftentimes we'll forget that we have this agency over our life. And a big part for me of romanticizing my life is looking at it as if I have agency. I have control over what I can control. Now the only constant is change. So sure, you're going to need to get used to riding the ups and downs of the roller coaster, but let's start to clear out what clutter exists. There's nothing better than me walking upstairs in the morning and knowing that everything is in its place, feeling that clarity, also feeling like I've set a routine around it. It can be really hard in the mornings or the evenings when you haven't had that routine to feel like you have the time to put things away. You definitely do, you just need to build it in. Which brings me to my next point, build a routine for yourself. Romanticizing your life is not just adding objects into your life, it's about getting rid of them. It's about redefining your concept of self-respect. It's about living the life that you want to live. So if you have a messy home, if you don't make your bed, if you don't get ready every single morning and you're just feeling like you're stuck in this slog or you're stuck in this rut, let's start to change that. But let's start to change it in small little ways. My husband and I have, we call them marriage terms. So we've defined what we need done every single morning in our home. Those are things like make the beds, feed our bunnies. We vacuum downstairs every single morning because that's where the bunnies run around and they shed a huge amount of hair. We make sure everything is restocked and cleaned. Once a week, we get groceries ordered to the home. There are all these little pieces of our routine that come together and now I don't even think about them anymore. Now for me, it's just something that we do and I know that it is going to get done. And this doesn't have to be overcomplicated. For you, you can start as small as a five, a 10, a 15 minute routine and then it can grow from there. The routines that I just spoke about are within our marriage contract. Those are things that my husband and I do together, but I also have things in my own morning routine that have helped a huge amount. I'm working very closely with a functional nutritionist, as you all know, and she has totally redefined the way that I look at my own morning routine. I used to wake up first thing in the morning and go grab a cup of coffee, so shoot, caffeine into my system effectively. Wouldn't get any sunlight. I would sit on my phone, I would check emails, I'd respond to messages, and then question why all of a sudden at 9 a.m. I had a raging headache. Now, when I wake up, I try really hard not to check my phone for at least an hour. Sometimes I only make it to 45 minutes, sometimes I make it to 30 minutes. The goal is there for an hour. My bunnies will jump on the bed, I'll talk to my husband, I will wake up. One of the really great changes that has come about since the pandemic is we no longer wake up with an alarm clock. We've actually shifted all of the lights to our home to they're the Philips Hughes lights and I love them. So all of the lights in our home are on timers. We live in Amsterdam and so at some points of the year we have very little sunlight and at other points in the year we have a ton of sunlight. Waking up with this soft lighting means that my body's not jolting awake. Coming upstairs, eating breakfast first without drinking coffee until I'm finished digesting my breakfast means that my body and my adrenals and those caffeine levels, the cortisol levels in my body aren't spiking so early on in the morning and I'm setting myself up for success. But then when I go and drink my coffee in the morning, I don't actually just drink it out of any old mug. I make sure I choose the mug that I feel the most connected to in the morning. Again, it's that intentionality. I am going to allow myself to use this very cute 
cute little pink mug with an orange handle or I have a couple of mugs from India that we purchased or I have just a bunch of super cute mugs and feel like I am living that fancy bougie life that I want to live, living that life that feels great to me. I don't just make coffee in the morning. I put my favorite milk in my coffee. I make sure I have my favorite Nespresso pod that I drink. I have friends who grind their coffee fresh every single morning. It's these small little ways that you can spoil yourself to make you feel like you are living a life that is fun to live. Life has so many different things that we're checking off of our to-do list. Why can't we make it more fun? Why can't we make it more exciting and sprinkle that little bit of magic into your life? We're only here once, so why wouldn't you wake up in the morning and drink your favorite coffee and drink it from your favorite mug? Continuing down the path of still making life fun, even within the confines of all the things that we need to tick off of our to-do list, let's talk about making your home your sanctuary. We talked about upgrading your lighting previously within my morning routine, but that trickles through to the rest of my home. Imagine if you woke up every morning with a really bright light and did your makeup in harsh lighting, went to the bathroom and had harsh lighting, took a shower in the harsh lighting. Like by the end of the day, you would just have this raging headache. Why not help control what you can control? You can't control when people stress you out, but you can control all of those different side elements. The food that you make sure is in your home, the lighting you use, the textiles you use in your home to make it a really calming space. You don't need to be a professional in any of these areas. All that I'm asking you to do is look inward and say, what area is missing? Like what would make my home feel so much safer? Outside out there is overwhelming. So why not make your space inside feel comforting, feel cozy, feel like a place that you actually want to be and actually want to live. We spend so much of our time at home, make it somewhere that you want to be. Whether that's buying pillows that you really love on your couch, buying linens that you really love to sleep in. I was really lucky in my childhood to have parents that were so focused on sleep quality. But I had friends that ended up sleeping on futons and sleeping four hours a night and wondering why they were constantly hungry or moody or upset. And I felt like in this area of my life, I actually ended up having a leg up that I brought through to adulthood with me. And I'm so very grateful for that. In our home now, our bedroom is the sanctuary. It's the area that I make sure I put a ton of time and effort into because I wanna make sure I can really drop into those REM cycles at night, that I drop into my deep sleep, that I am restoring my body body. We do so much emotional restoration, mental restoration at night when we are sleeping. And I just don't believe that enough people are putting the respect towards their sleep patterns in the way that they should. So in the way that you are creating a morning routine, let's also create that evening routine for you. Let's make sure you have the things that you need near your bed. Let's make sure that you have a comfortable bed, something that you can go and look forward to jumping into at night, not just because you're exhausted, not just because you have to, but because you want to. And these don't need to be expensive. Amazon sells great sheets that are super comfortable that I've had for years. Equally, you can go and buy expensive sheets if that's somewhere you want to splurge. So this isn't about the expense. This isn't about adding more things into your life. This is about elevating your life in the ways that you deserve. Sometimes I feel like we don't give ourselves these little luxuries because we don't feel like we deserve it. I want you to hear me when I say, you deserve all of the little luxuries. You deserve that extra little tree. You deserve that really comfortable mattress to sleep on. But if that's not a space that you're in right now, set it as a goal for yourself. There's nothing better than accomplishing our goals and then getting to reward ourselves once that goal is complete. Now this is kind of in the same vein as rewarding yourself, but it's more mental and this is more of a mindset shift when it comes to romanticizing your life than an actual thing that we're gonna add in. And that is practicing gratitude. When I get really caught up in my anxiety or my emotions, it's really easy to forget all of the incredible things that I have. I do want you to hear me though when I say that does not negate some of the negative aspects of your life. Practicing gratitude should not be a coping mechanism that shoves things under the rug and makes you forget about things that make you feel uncomfortable or things that hurt you because that emotional roller coaster is a really important one for us to ride to better know ourselves and understand ourselves. But practicing gratitude also allows us to stop comparisonitis, to stop comparing ourselves to what everyone else has or doesn't have versus what we have or we don't have. Romanticizing your life when we talk about it in that consumerist way, it ends up being this game that we play where we're like, very 
they're drinking water out of a Yeti and so romanticizing my life means I'm going to get a Yeti. Not necessarily. The romanticizing part of that is you're drinking cold water with ice and lemon in a fun glass. There's so many options that are less expensive. You probably have an option in your home, but we're elevating and we're letting ourselves live a life that feels really comfortable and we're giving it to ourselves. We're not waiting for someone else to give it to us and recognizing that is gratitude. Recognizing that we have the ability to make that decision for ourselves is gratitude. But if it's hard to see that macro view, that macro lens of gratitude, well, let's talk about it in small ways. What I've been doing is sitting at the very end of the day and saying, what am I grateful for today? Because we get caught up in our to-dos, we get caught up in friendships, we get caught up in our relationships, and then it's easy to go, well, I didn't go on vacation this place, or I didn't have this thing, and I'm seeing all these people, especially on social media, go and do these things that I wish I could do but let's reframe your mindset here. Let's start to manifest the life that we actually want to live and do that first through practicing gratitude. Through that, you can find more contentment and happiness in the life that you're living right now because your life does not need to drastically change in order for you to feel more grateful or in order for you to feel like you are happy in the life that you're living. Instead, we need to shift that mindset around in the way that you view your life, where your thoughts go, that's where your energy is going to flow. So let's redirect it in a more grateful direction instead of one stuck on comparison or negative self-talk because I can hear you overthinking from here. I can hear you starting to compare yourself. And if you find yourself comparing or when you go out with friends, you're having a really hard time having conversations with them because you just don't feel like you're living a life that you're excited to talk about, let's go inward first. Let's have you spend some time alone. Let's have you rediscover who you are because a huge part for me of romanticizing my life has been, let's take myself on little dates. Let's rediscover why I love myself so much. Let's play around with my fashion style. Let's play around with the makeup I wear or I don't wear. You are the one that matters. You're the only one that's going to be living your life. So stop letting other people dictate how you are going to live it. And if we're going to start romanticizing our life, we first need to figure out what we want and what makes us happy. And in order to do that, we need to spend more time alone. So go have fun on your own. Bring yourself on fun dates. Go and think about what would I do with my friends if I were with them right now and go and do that thing with yourself anyway. I was reading something the other day that said, when was the last time you taught yourself to do something new with your hands? And I loved that phrase because it's true. When was the last time you really taught yourself to do something that wasn't on social media, that wasn't you scrolling and comparing and looking at someone else's life and trying to think, how can I make my life more like theirs? When we get outside of that zone, we're able to tap in to what we want out of life, to what excites us, to what makes us more grateful. But in order to do that, we really need to spend that time alone. If you take one thing away from this episode, it's that romanticizing your life starts with you. It starts with the way you view your life. And if there's something in your life that just is not working, that you feel like you're just fixating on and you are unable to get through it and you feel like it is the defining element of your life, let's figure out a way we can change it. Let's figure out what makes you happy and what doesn't make you happy. And then let's figure out ways that we can add small moments of magic into your life. We show others how to treat us by the way we treat ourselves. So if you're asking someone else to treat you better, if you're asking someone else to spend more time with you, if you're asking for a promotion, if you're asking for anything else that you feel like is going to make your life better, well, start treating yourself with the same level of respect that you are hoping and expecting others to give you. And that can be as small as drinking your coffee out of your favorite cup, going and getting a new plant, teaching yourself how to do something outside, going on a long walk, getting yourself new running shoes, starting that new hobby. There's so many things that you can do to romanticize your life. There's nothing worse than waking up every morning and not being excited about what you're going to do next. Then thinking, oh, I have to go to my job or I'm in this relationship that's not fueling me or I have to talk to this person or hang out with this person I don't wanna hang out with or eat this breakfast I don't wanna eat. At the end of the day, you have the agency to make those changes. So let's start to do that for you. And if you wanna see how I'm incorporating all these different pieces into my life on a day-to-day -day basis, now to be fair, I don't do this perfectly every day. Perfection is not expected, intentionality is expected, and that is what we are all about here on this channel. But please follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm trying to share a huge amount about my life on those channels. Authenticity is hard, vulnerability is hard, but we are on a self-love journey and a healing journey, and I'm so very happy that you're here with me. That brings us to the very end of this episode. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section 
description below. Check the description box as well for any links that I may have mentioned throughout this episode. Make sure you tune in next week for another episode of Organized Chaos. I'm Regan and I will see you next time. Thanks everyone.